welcome back. Um, so we were uh, added at a performance over flat fading. The, the performance, by the way, on, on frequency selective fading, I don't cover here. This will be related to the OFDM lecture. Um, I, I don't really talk about equalization because it's a kind of old fashioned topic, but in OFDM, this will be revisited. Now, when we have um, a time varying flat fading channel, our continuous time observation will look something like this. In discrete time, we will have observations. Let's see which notation we used before. Y. We'll have observations y k square root e s k a k plus n k. And so the main difference from before is that now the the signal power will change with time. Right. So you have the s n r at time k will be e s k over n naught. And this s n r is now a random variable. It is random and it has some correlation. So the figure here on the right shows the the SNR or the received power. Okay, it's it's uh, it's the same thing up to scaling as a function of time, right? So you see it varies over time. On average, it's some value due to path loss and shadowing, but due to multipath, it changes over time. And sometimes the channel is good, so the SNR is good. Sometimes the channel is bad. This is called a deep fade when the SNR is really low. And this horizontal line represents a, a threshold. So let's suppose that when the SNR is above minus 10 dB here, then I can communicate. So here it's good and here it's bad. Now, since the SNR is random, we can have different uh, performance metrics. So here we see two of them. One is called outage probability. That's the probability that the SNR falls below some threshold. So I can maybe try to draw this. So the SNR has some distribution, P of gamma S. So under Rayleigh fading, the SNR will have an exponential distribution. Right. And then there's some threshold value here, gamma threshold. And then the outage probability is a probability that the SNR falls below this threshold. So the outage probability is this area here. Outage probability. So that's some number between 0 and 1 that we want to keep small. Um, another metric is called the average error probability. And that tells you when I look over a long time, what is the error probability on average? And I just want to think about a reasonable way to represent this. So let's say this is the, again the distribution on top of the SNR. On the other hand, as a function of the SNR, we also have the error probability, PS of gamma, and that will look something, well, okay, let's do like this, if this is in dB, right? And that means for each SNR, like this, there's a certain probability, P, and with the same SNR, there's also a certain, ever, uh, certain error probability, P, PS. So what this PS bar is, is the error probability on average over all the possible SNRs. You can also have combinations of these, two, of these two, and we'll see an example later where we want to achieve some average error probability, some fraction in, in the space or time. Now, which metric we use depends actually on the regime that we are in. So we consider three different regimes. The first one is when the symbols are short with respect to the coherence time. So in that case, um, the, the, the channel remains constant for many symbols, and then either uh, all the symbols in the package will have a good quality or bad quality. And in this case, we will use outage probability as a, a reasonable metric. If the symbol time is much greater than the coherence time, this means that within a symbol, you will see many channels. That's something that we don't consider here. And then the fading would be averaged out. And actually, it's only the average value that matters. So that's not, not a case that we consider in this course. And then the last case is when the symbol time is on the order of the coherence time. So maybe not the same, but maybe a few times the coherence time. No, or the coherence time is a few times the symbol time. Then the, ch the channel changes um, within a packet typically, and then we will use average error probability. And to mitigate that, we will use diversity. We will see this in the, in the next lecture.
Good. Um, now, since we said that SNR is random, because we have different effects of the child, there are actually different notions of SNR and different notions of power. So let's walk through this. First of all, there's the received power due to path loss only. And we, we denote this by PR with two bars on top. And these two bars indicate that we've somehow averaged two times. The SNR due to shadowing, so this is after path loss and shadowing, will be with one bar. And this is uh, the SNR due to path loss plus a Gaussian uh, random variable in the DB domain. This is the log normal shadowing. The SNR, oh, sorry, the receive power after the multipath, it will be denoted PR without any bar. And this will be an exponential random variable times the power due to path loss and shadowing. Okay, so this, this means that the, the average of this random variable will be PR bar, the received power due to path loss and shadowing. So these are all written here again, these received powers. We can then divide by the noise power spectral density and the bandwidth, and this gives us the SNR. So there are three SNRs, SNR due to path loss, SNR due to path loss and shadowing, SNR due to path loss, shadowing, and multi-path fading. Okay. No bar, one bar, and two bars. That's how they are different. And there's some relationship between the, these, uh, of course. We've seen that if you take the expectation of the received power after path loss, shadowing, and fading, you obtain the received power after path loss and shadowing only in the linear domain. Okay, this is in the linear domain. And a similar relationship holds if you average out the path loss uh, due to path, the, sorry, the received power due to path loss and shadowing over the shadowing. And then you receive, then you have the received power due to path loss only. And this is in the DB domain. All right, so we've seen three different notions of received power, three different notions of SNR. So then with this, we have different SNR distributions. Of course, due to path loss only, it is deterministic. So there's no distribution. Due to path loss and shadowing, it's random. So this will be log normal in the linear domain or normal in the DB domain. And this will also be random. And this will be uh, Gaussian, really exponential. Okay, so this is for the channel, envelope, or the absolute value of the channel, and this for the power. Yeah, we've seen this in the previous lectures. Good, so now we can uh, plot these SNR distributions. On the left side is the SNR distribution of gamma s. So this is this last one after path loss shadowing and multipath fading. And this is an exponential distribution in this case where the average value is gamma bar s, which is the SNR after path loss and shadowing. Okay, so this is the multipath fading distribution for given path loss and shadowing. So this here depends on path loss plus shadowing. Another SNR distribution is shown on the left. Oh, sorry, it's shown on the right. So this is the distribution of the SNR after path loss and shadowing, given the path loss. And this will be a Gaussian distribution in the DB domain. Okay, so the distribution of gamma bar S in the DB domain, where the average value is this gamma bar bar S in the DB domain, which is due to path loss only. Good. So important to distinguish these different SNR distributions because it depends, it depends what, you, what you consider to be random for your example. Good, so now let's apply this. First of all, outage probability. So outage probability corresponds to when the performance is below some threshold. So again, I can draw this. The ingredients are always the same. We have gamma S, P of gamma S, and let me try to draw an exponential distribution. On the other hand, we have another performance metric, let's say symbol error probability as a function of gamma s, and this will be something like this. This is in the db domain, right? 
And then we say we have an outage when the performance is bad. So let's say we have some symbol error rate of 10 to the minus 5, for instance. This gives us some gamma threshold. If we're below this gamma threshold, we are bad. If we're above this gamma threshold, we are good. We can then find this gamma threshold here, right? And then the probability of being below the threshold value, this is the outage probability. This is again gamma threshold. So the figure on the bottom, it's in the DB domain, of course, and the figure on the top, it's not. Okay, so this is the symbol error rate. All right, so now we go to the left side of the slide. So the outage probability is the probability that the SNR is below some threshold. So it's this area under the curve. Let me just make it very explicit. So in this case, the outage will be very large. In the specific case of a really fading distribution, the SNR has an exponential distribution. So then uh, we can plug in this distribution. Right, so the, the distribution is given by this. This is the CDF of the exponential distribution. It's given by this expression, where we have this uh, parameter here and here is the same thing. This is the SNR due to path loss plus shadowing. We integrate from zero to gamma zero, the threshold, because we care about the probability of being below the threshold here. And this turns out you can solve in closed form and you find this expression. So it's something that relates to the threshold and the SNR due to path loss and shadowing. Uh, from this, you can introduce something called a fade, fade margin. So um, this is the value that you need for the average SNR if you can only tolerate a certain outage. Oops, sorry, that was my pen. So let's say that I want the outage to be equal to 0.001, right? That's how often I can tolerate an outage. Then this tells me what is the gamma bar S, right? And then this tells me what, for instance, should be the transmit power. How much transmit power do I need to make sure the outage is uh, no more than, than this value here? Now, you can also define outage for shadowing, right? So for shadowing, we will look at gamma bar S. And this has a Gaussian distribution, so we can apply kind of the same things. And then you will have something that involves a Q function. And you can also compute this outage probability in closed form. All right, the second metric is the average error probability. So here we consider that the um, channel is, let's see, yeah, sorry, the, the SNR due to path loss and shadowing is constant, but we have still the SNR due to multipath fading with varies, which varies over time. So I think a way to visualize this as follows. You have time, during this time you send many symbols, so let's say this visual, this symbolizes a symbol, many symbols. And then during this time, the channel changes over time like this. And then you want to say something about the performance during this transmission of these many symbols, right? And if the transmission is long enough that you will have seen all the fading realizations, you can compute the so-called average error probability, which is given by this expression. Okay, and again, um, we have the same ingredients, gamma s distribution over gamma s exponential, gamma s and db, the symbol error rate, like this. And now instead of having a threshold, we just match each gamma s here and here and compute the average. And again, for um, uh, really fading, this P of gamma will be the exponential distribution. It turns out that this is actually quite hard to calculate in most cases, but for, for BPS case, so binary phase shift keying, uh, there is a good approximate expression that is uh, of this shape. Good, that uh, leads us to another break. So see you in a minute.